Shalom everyone, praise, honor, and esteem to Ab Yahuwah through his son Yahusha HaMashiach. In case you want to get in touch with us, here are our contact details. You can also support us in a variety of ways. And I hope you will find this video useful. I feel this letter provides us with a great opportunity to address some misconceptions in Christianity. It will be very easy to follow along and I will be replying to these points step by step as they come up. There are thoughts in this letter I agree with, although I think I approach it from a different perspective, so the reason for my agreement is not the same as the author's, nonetheless we are in agreement. Starts out with the gospel has always been misrepresented and misunderstood. I could not agree with this anymore. Up to this very day, the good news, Bessara, has been grossly misrepresented and misunderstood. And the main culprit in this, I think, is Christianity. They seem to be the ones who forget about Yahusha HaMashiach's words in Matityahu or Matthew 7.13 Enter all of you in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Christianity is a major religion according to Encyclopedia Britannica, stemming from the life, teachings and death of Jesus of Nazareth. It has become the largest of the world's religions and geographically the most widely diffused of all faiths. It has a constituency of more than 2 billion believers. Its largest groups are Roman Catholic, Eastern Orthodox and Protestant churches. Think about this for a second. If Christianity was the way to salvation, it has 2 billion followers, almost third of the population of the whole earth. How would that be true? Enter all of you in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. How about that two billion people? Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leads unto life, and few there be that find it. How are those people fit this description? Straight gate, narrow way, few there be that find it. Christianity cannot be the way. Not because I don't like it or I hate them people, because the Bible, the scriptures says so. And we see the reason for it in verse 15. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. This is Christianity. The religion stemming from the Roman Catholic Church, the great whore of Babylon, and all its offspring, the Protestant churches, and here's a list for you, Anglican, Baptist, Calvinist, Congregationalism, Evangelical, Lutheran, Oriental, Presbyterian, Reformed, blah blah blah. And everyone else who agrees with the teaching of Christianity that the Torah, the law of Moshe, the law of Yahuwah, Ab Yahuwah, the Father, is done away with. And that would include Jehovah's Witnesses and Seventh-day Adventists. It is not to say that these people are bad or stupid or don't understand. The fact of the matter is that straight is the gate, narrow the way, and few there be that find it. Two billion people cannot be that. Therefore, yes, I agree. The Bessara, the good news, has always been misrepresented and misunderstood. One of the tools in the adversary's hand is a religion called Christianity and a character. Jesus Christ. He is God. He is his own father. He sends himself, dies for humanity, so then they can do whatever they want. They can make up their own rules, their own way to salvation. He is the one abolishing the law of Moshe, the law of Yahuwah. He is the one who loves everybody and accepts them the way they are. The real Mashiach the Anointed One never said anything about abolishing the law. Actually, in Matityahu, 5th chapter, 17th verse, he says this, Think not that I come to destroy the law of the prophets. I'm not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Yet in this letter we can read, If it was not for Paul or Shaul, we would all be keeping the law of Moshe today. How about this? How about a contradiction? So whom shall believe? Yahushua HaMashiach, 
the anointed one, or this letter that has a problem for us to be keeping the law of Moshe today. It says, think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. If fulfill means that we do not need to follow that anymore, that would be destroying it. It's G2647, Kataluo, destroy, to dissolve, disunite, what has been joined together to destroy, demolish, overthrow, render vain, deprive of success, bring to naught, to subvert, overthrow, to deprive of force, and now, abrogate, discard. In the scriptures it means destroy, throw down, large guest, come to naught, overthrow, dissolve. So if we don't need to keep the law of Moshe today, would it not be dissolved, brought to naught, subverted, overthrown, deprived of success, demolished? I think we all need to think about this. There's another thought. The church would not have survived if it was not for Shaul's heroic intervention at crucial times. Shaul was not fighting against the law of Moshe. He could not have been doing that. The misunderstanding and misrepresentation is on those people who fight against the law of Moshe or the law of Ab Yahuwah today and at any point in history. Kepha or Peter warned us about this. Second episode, third chapter, 15th verse, and account that the long suffering of our sovereign is salvation, even as our beloved brother Shaul also according to the wisdom given unto him, has written unto you. This is talking about Shaul or Paul writing his epistles to the ecclesia all over the world, as also in all his epistles speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable shift, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. If it was easy to understand, Kepha wouldn't have written this. Think now of Christianity. They think they are the ones representing and understanding this message of Shaul's. Two billion people understand this. That would be easy to understand, but what Kepha says, it is hard to understand. And the unlearned an unstable shift the message. This message is Christianity. Unlearned is a person ignorant or unlearned, literally. This person is the opposite of what the Talmudim or the apostles were. Those people learned the truth from Yahusha HaMashiach. They didn't learn it in school or in an education system. Those who did learn it in school, they were the fools. They were Pharisees, Sadducees, scribes, as they are today. Today they would be called theologians, scholars, doctors of philosophy and theology. These are the people who don't understand. They are the ones unlearned and unstable who shift the message as they do to the other scriptures. And this is how Christianity came about. This is why people do not keep the law today. This is why they talk about the Torah as something burdensome or a curse. Torah has never been a problem. It could not have been. That was the one walking amongst man, Yahusha HaMashiach. The word became flesh. That word is Torah. What else could it be? From the beginning with the Father? That is his word, Torah. That's the law all people like to hate today. At least most of them. Shaul could not have been warring against this. He wasn't fighting against Torah. He was fighting against the same things Yahusha HaMashiach was fighting against. And that is the tradition of man. Christianity, for example. Pharisees asked him, Why walk not your disciples according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashed hands? They asked him about tradition, not Torah. Tradition of the elders. This is paradosis. Giving up, giving over. The act of giving up. To surrender of cities. Giving over which is done by word of mouth or in writing, i.e. tradition. Tradition by instruction. 
narrative, precept. We do not even need to make up anything. This is written here of the body of precepts, ritual, which in the opinion of the later Jews were orally delivered by Moshe and orally transmitted in unbroken succession to subsequent generations, which precepts both illustrating and expanding the written law as they did were to be obeyed with equal reverence. This is not Torah. This is what they added to it. Mishnah. Talmud. Today this would be called Judaism. That is the question, why walk not your disciples according to the tradition of the elders, the Talmud, the Mishnah, our thoughts? Pay close attention to Yahusha HaMashiach's answer. He says, well has Yeshayahu prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Honoring with their lips is saying they love him, they love his word, they love his Mashiach, but their heart is far from him because they do not what he delights in, and that is his word, his Torah, his firstborn. You do not need to believe me because this is written, nevertheless in vain do they worship me, in vain do they worship me, vain is matein. Fruitless, vain. It is fruitless, vain to do what people think or people command or their traditions. That is Christianity, amongst other things. In vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of man, not Torah. That's never been the commandment of man. If you want to look at Leviticus 23, speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them concerning the feast of Yahuwah which all of you shall proclaim to be set apart convocation, even these are my feasts. These are not Jewish feasts, these are not Moshe's law, these are Yahuwah's feast. Verse 3, it is the Shabbat of Yahuwah in all your dwellings. It is not Moshe's or the Jews. These are the feasts of Yahuwah or the Lord, even set apart convocation, which all of you shall proclaim in their seasons. This is throughout this chapter. Just read it for yourself and you understand. These are the Father's feast. This is His. We can talk about the food laws, or as people like to call them, the dietary law. This is Vayikra Leviticus 11. For I am Yahuwah your Elohim. All of you shall therefore set yourselves apart. All of you shall be set apart, for I am set apart. Neither shall all of you defile yourself with any matter of creeping things that creeps upon Haaretz, or the earth. For I am Yahuwah, or the Lord, that brings you up out of the land of Mitzrayim to be your Elohim. All of you shall therefore be set apart, for I am set apart. 47. To make a difference between the unclean and the clean, between the beast that may be eaten and the beast that may not be eaten. HaMashiach, or the anointed, wasn't talking about dietary law, or a feast, or Shabbat. He was those things. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his esteem, the esteem, as of the only begotten of the Father, full of favor and truth. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was that Word. He could not have been talking about against himself. He was talking about traditions of man. And actually that's what he's saying here. Teaching for doctrines the commandments of man. This is done away with. We don't need to do the feasts. Now we have Christmas. Dietary law is for the Jews. We do not need to follow that. The eternal covenant with Abraham, it was just a picture of something, so circumcision is now not necessary. He's never talked about this, ever. In verse 8, for laying aside the commandment of Elohim. What is the commandment of Elohim if it's not Torah? This is the one laid aside today by people who profess themselves to be followers of Hamashiach. All of you hold the tradition of man as the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things, all of you do. What is his problem then? Laying aside the commandment of Elohim. This is why he cried Leviticus chapter 12 verse 3, and in the eighth day the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. 
talking about a male child. So if for laying aside the commandment of Elohim is a problem, teaching for doctrines the commandments of man, how about this then? What is this? Saying that we do not need to be circumcised no more? Isn't this a commandment of Elohim? People honor me with their lips, but their heart or their actions is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of Elohim, all of you hold the tradition of man. He repeats it in verse 9. He says unto them, Full well all of you reject the commandment of Elohim, that all of you may keep your own tradition. Please do not take it personal, but Ellen G. White's writings are tradition of man. Actually, that would be the textbook example of that. You reject the commandment of Elohim, that all of you may keep your own tradition. The commandment, the visions, the prophecies, the thoughts of man. Verse 13, making the word of Elohim of no effect through your tradition, which all of you have delivered, and many such like things do all of you. What was the problem then? In Marcus or Mark chapter 7, is it not obvious what the problem was? Your tradition was the problem, paradosis, your ideas, man's tradition. The commandment of Elohim was something to be held in the highest regard, because the commandment of Elohim, the Torah, was walking among men, and his name was Yahusha HaMashiach. He cannot be changed, altered, set aside, destroyed, abolished, because he is the same yesterday, and today, and forever, is Abrim. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8 says, So if he's the same always, how can he be changed? What was the problem then? What was Shaul fighting against? Was it keeping the law of Moshe? That could not have been. Just one more short thought. The church would not have survived if it was not for Shaul's heroic intervention at crucial times. This could not have been further from the truth. Saying that Yahushua HaMashiach's work and Elohim's efforts weren't enough and he needed a man to save those efforts is just plain naive at best, but I think it's quite foolish. This is the point when I have to agree with what they are writing here. Judaizers and Judaism is a major problem, but it's not because of Torah, it is because of the traditions of man, Mishnah, Tamud, and all precepts and commandments they have gathered throughout history and added to Torah. That is a big problem. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 2, Yahuwah says, do not add and do not take away from my Torah. He repeats this warning in chapter 12, verse 32. This is Judaism today, and back then it was the same thing. We must fight against it. Torah must not be added to or taken away from. People love to cite Acts chapter 15, saying that circumcision and keeping the law of Moshe is not in effect today. But let me show you something. Here's the problem in verse 1. And certain men which came down from Yahudea or Judea taught the brethren, said. This is what these people are claiming. These are Yahudim, Israelites, who believe in Mashiach Yahusha. These are not Christians. Christians weren't around at that time. They were the followers of Mashiach Yahusha. The Christianity of today, this pagan tradition, was unknown at that time. That came about through the work of the Roman Catholic Church hundreds of years later. So no one should become Christians. Actually, I think people shouldn't become Christians, must not become Christians. To follow traditions of man, hundreds of years of corruption of Ab Yahuwah's word and his Torah and the message of his anointed one. Christianity is a false idea, is a lie. This is what these people say, except all of you be circumcised after the manner of Moshe, all of you cannot be saved. And this is false. Salvation is a gift. Salvation requires no effort or action on our part. 
It is what it says. This is a gift. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. Salvation is a gift from Elohim, and we've not done nothing to deserve it, and we cannot earn it. So saying that one needs to do this or that to be saved is false. It is untrue. These Pharisees and Sadducees and all other sects started teaching people and hadn't understood the message correctly. So let me state that I am in agreement with the writers of this letter. We cannot do anything to earn salvation and I do not agree with these Judaizers here. And yes, I understand the conversation. I read it a hundred times probably. And let me show you the full conclusion of the matter, not half of it. What they talk about in this letter, that Gentiles only need to refrain from pollution of idols, fornication, things strangled and from blood. If that was the case, we wouldn't have to keep Shabbat as the Seventh-day Adventists teach. Where is the Shabbat here? Where is stealing, murder, theft, robbery, bestiality? Can we do all those things? Of course not. So this cannot be the whole conclusion, but it isn't. Conveniently, of course, they forget to mention verse 21. Verse 19 and 20, I think everyone knows that. Wherefore my sentence is that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned to Elohim, but that we write unto them that they abstain from pollution of idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood. Acts 15, 19 and 20. But there is a verse after this, 21st. For Moshe of old time has in every city them that preach him been read in the synagogue every Shabbat day. This is the conclusion of the matter. It's not that all oh, these four things you don't do and you'll be fine. Of course not. You'd still be a Gentile. A decent vegan don't do these things. They don't eat things strangled and blood. They don't fornicate. That is the start. This is what he's talking about. It is like a baby. When it's born, it does not start going to school straight away. It needs to just crawl around, lift his head, sit up, stand up, totter around, walk, run, and then, at some point, start playing with things, understanding the word around it, and then go to school. This is exactly what they talk about. Listen. If you want to join this ecclesia, the set-apart ones, you must not deal with idols because that's just not acceptable. And also, how could you deal with idols and say that you follow the living Elohim? That's not possible. This is why they say these four things are fundamentals to our walk, but not the only things. And also, if we don't need to do anything to get salvation. How about these four things? So there are things we need to do. Fornication and blood are also from Torah. Leviticus 18 and 20 details the types of fornication and the sexual behavior of a follower of Hamashiach and the law against eating blood was given to Nach or Noah. And from then on it is reinforced through our Torah. So I suggest think about it this way. You must start with these four things, otherwise you're not even in consideration. These are opposed to the way. Once you get this, then you start coming to the synagogue on the Shabbat and learn Moshe. That is exactly what's written here and you cannot escape it, only if you exclude it from your studies. And it is suspicious for me that these people just left this out, although they repeated Acts 15.28 when James, or Jacob, recites the verdict, abstaining from meat offered to idols, blood, things strangled, and fornication. How can this detail be just simply left out? Do you want to tell me that no one noticed that? But is there Moshe of all time has in every city them that preach him being read in the synagogue every Shabbat day? Why would this be there? If we don't need to attend synagogue or read Moshe on the Shabbat, how is that possible to leave this out? Is it just a small detail? 
James and all this council could not have concluded that this is the four things that we need to do and that's it. I fully agree that Judaizers begin to preach the usual Judaizer corruption of the good news, so as Christians preach the usual Christian corruption of the good news. And have they been successful? And indeed, in Galatians 2nd chapter, Kepha walked not according to the good news. He should have known better. In Acts chapter 10, Elohim revealed to him the truth. In every nation, everyone who is willing to follow Torah and follow Mashiach Yahusha's example will be accepted. But one cannot be a Gentile, a pagan, and claim to be the follower of Mashiach Yahusha who was the living word of Elohim, and that is Torah. Kepha listened to man. He bent. So are Christians bending over to the world, the expectations of the world. Rightly so, they cite Galatians chapter 2, verse 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Yahushua HaMashiach, even we have believed in Yahushua HaMashiach, that we might be justified by the faith of HaMashiach and not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Justified actually means dikayo, to render righteous or such he ought to be. To show, exhibit, Evans, one to be righteous such as he is and wishes himself to be considered, to declare, pronounce, one to be just, righteous, or such as he ought to be. A person is as he ought to be. That is just. We ought to be like Hamashiach Yahusha, the living Torah. So how can we be different and still be just? If no actions are required or works, how can Sha'u write this? Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. Everyone knows this, I'm sure, in Christianity. For by favor are all of you saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is a gift of Elohim, not of works, lest any man should boast. Meaning, it is a gift, we were not deserving it. We were not just or righteous. We are sinners. It's not that I or anyone else was better than the other person, so we get salvation, we get this gift. It wasn't deserved. But how about verse 10? For we are his workmanship, created in Hamashiach Yahusha unto good works, which Elohim has before ordained that we should walk in them. So do we need works or don't we? How about not of works, lest any man should boast, and we are created for good works? If it's true we don't need works, then how can Yehokanon or John write this, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before Elohim, and the books were open, and another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. If there are no works required, what are these works then? After this, sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and Sheol delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged, every man according to their works. How about them works then? This is nothing new, of course. Yechizikia chapter 18 verse 21 says this, But if the wicked will turn from all his sins, that he has committed, and keep all my statutes, and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, and he shall not die. All his transgressions that he has committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. Listen carefully. In his righteousness that he has done, he shall live. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die? Says Yahuwah Elohim and not that he should return from his way and live. This is exactly what Kepha in the first episode says. Fourth chapter. For as much then as HaMashiach has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourself likewise with the same mind. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. He does not do no more sin. That is righteous works, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh, to the lust of man, but to the will of Elohim. 
living the life, our works. We must prove that we have faith in that gift, and the proof is our works. But you don't need to believe me. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. What is the will of the Gentiles? Lawlessness, trawless life. Gentile is a person who is not of Israel, and the difference between the world and the children of Elohim is that the children of Elohim follow His word, and His word is Torah. When we walked in lasciviousness, lusts, excess of wine, revellings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries, wherein they think it strange that all of you run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. This is the word speaking evil of the people who try to follow Torah, that is righteousness. But here is the same concept we read in Yehezekiel and Chazon or Revelation: Who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead? That judging we just read about in Revelation chapter twenty. For this cause was the good news preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to man in the flesh, but live. According to the Elohim in the Spirit, Shaul repeats this over and over. For not the hearers of the Torah are just before Elohim, but the doers of the law shall be justified. How can the doers of the law be justified if it's done away with, if it's fulfilled, so we don't need to do that? There is no way one can say that this is the law of Christ or the law of love. There's no way one can distinguish this law. From Torah, this must be that. What what people hear? Law. That's the Torah they hear in Acts. We just read it, chapter fifteen, verse twenty-first. The law of Moshe preached on the Shabbat every synagogue. That's the law he's talking about here. It's not enough to hear this, but you must do it. He says circumcision verily profits. It is a good thing if you keep the law. In First Corinthians chapter seven verse nineteen, circumcision is nothing, and uncircumcision is nothing. So, what is something then? But the keeping of the commandments of Elohim. So, how can one get around this? The commandments of Elohim is Torah. So, let me sum it up real quick because this has been quite a long video. Judaizers and Judaism is a big problem. So is Christianity. The tradition of man. The thoughts and ideas and philosophy of persons has corrupted the true good news. The good news is simple: Elohim gives us a clean slate, a blank sheet, wipes away all our sins, provided that we believe in Hamashiach Yahusha, His sacrifice, His lamb, and we prove it with our lifestyle. That the Ruach Hakodesh, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, drives us forward day after day, and the person who is driven by this Ruach will not sin, and sin is the transgression of the law. First John chapter three, verse four, and that is not the law of Jesus or the law of love. That is. Torah. Should you want to get in touch with us, here's our contact details, and we are looking forward to hearing from you. In case you'd like to support us, that's much appreciated. Praise, honor, and esteem to Abba Yahuwah through His Son Yahusha Hamashiach. Shalom.